So thank you all for coming today on this beautiful sunny day. I'm glad you came here to, to hear our Nolay County. Um, before we get started, I want to thank friends of the library who provided all the refreshments right over there on the table if you want some water or, or cookies or crackers. They also provided funds to purchase some of the books that are on the display about organic gardening and farm to table farming and all that kind of thing. Um, now, I would like to welcome Agricultural Commissioner Steve Hagen. Um, he's been the Lake County Agricultural Commissioner and Sealer of Weights and Measures since 2002, and he's worked for Merced, Modoc, San Luis Obispo, and Mendocino counties. So join me in welcoming Steve. Okay, I've been talking today about the, about the certified farmers markets, organic, direct marketing. That's a good idea. Okay, I'll first talk about certified farmers markets. There's, there's a difference between farmers markets and certified farmers markets. Anyone can have a farmers market, frankly, but they have. But a certified means that, that you're exempt from certain rules. So I'll go what a what a farmers market is. That means that anyone and their friends, as long as they work with planning and environmental health, can set up at their own their own market. We have one on Highway 29, which you've probably seen by Walnut Orchard. That's not a certified farmer's market, it's just a farmer's market. If the, if the county wanted to charge them, they probably could, but it's up to them. But, I mean, funds or fees, is what I'm saying. Uh, the thing about a farmer's market is they're not exempt from certain things that a certified farmer's market is. A certified farmer's market allows allows growers or, or, or any other person to sell to sell produce and not have to worry about size requirements, count, standard packing and labeling. Where if a, where a farmer's markets, if there are rules that the industry has established for that commodity, frankly, I can go order them and take it off sale because they're not a certified farmer's market. And if anyone has any questions, let me know when I'm done. But anyway, or as I go, anyway, sorry. Um, this, the food still has to be right. But, a, but the reason why, they, why, background here, the reason why some commodities have standards is this. Okay, picture a box of lettuce. You're in California, and it's New York City. A one person says, I can sell you 12 heads for a dollar. One person says, I can sell you six heads for a, for a dollar. You're going to go with the 12, not knowing that those 12 are this big, where the six are, are actually normal size. Um, so, so that's why in the, the commodity industry has developed standards for certain size boxes, certain size fruit, certain size packs. So everyone knows when they say a box of lettuce, a box of lettuce means a box of lettuce, and it, and it, and it means it for 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 all for for all for all for all lettuce. Does that make sense? So that's why they have these rules. <coughs> now, if you're a farmer and you're growing lemons, <coughs> question. Oh, oh. No, my hand. Okay, sorry. sorry. And you have lemons, and the, and your buyer says, you know what? The lemons are just too small. They're great quality, um, but they're just too small for me. What are you gonna do? Or say you're a farmer. And you have more lemons than what you than what you ever had, and there's a limit. And the market only has so much space and cold storage. So what do you do? Where do you go? The certified farmers market. And that's why it was that's why it was established. Because back in the 70s there was excess of stone fruit, peaches, nectarines, apricots, whatever. They couldn't sell them. Well, well, well rather than toss them away. Because they didn't have buyers, they, they, they made they allowed something called a certified, a certified farmers market. And that's and that's how it got got established. How do you get certified? I'll, I'll go over that. Okay, um, so that covers that. Okay, now if you're going to have a farmers market, you're going to run one. Certified okay, certified producers, which I'll get into later, can establish one. Local governments can establish one, and nonprofit or, or organizations can establish one. We have two out of three here. Uh, okay, Farmers Finest is a nonprofit organization. 
actually we have only one like that, but well, actually the one, the one in, in the middle of town potentially is a certified producer. We don't have any ones for the, for the, for the government, although I know that's how the um, Clear Lake Oaks one got, got started, but I don't know if it's going to stay established. We, they only had two or three growers last year. So, so there's a form. You have to have the market name, the name of the operator, market manager, location of market, months in operation, days in operation, hours in operation, and a $50 fee to us. But I see a lot of people say, I want a farmer's market. But they never come to us and say, can I have a list of people who are certified to sell? They hardly ever do that. So what happens to their markets? They have no place to go, and they die. Um, we're, if, if anyone wants to establish a, 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 a certified farmer's market, the first call should be to me, saying how many people are there in the county who are certified? We can give them a list, and they can then establish it. Um, you also have to secure a location. Uh, you can't just set up shop anywhere. Planning has something, has something to say about it, for sure. And, and environmental health needs to know, too, because they do inspections as well. There has to be market rules. What time to start, what time to end, good, what's good behavior defined, following state regulations, procedures for removing vendors, establishing board of directors. And here's why. Farmer's market, especially ones that are busy. Uh, someone comes in late, starts at 8.30, they're here they're at quarter to nine, driving through with their car as people are shopping in the middle of the market, going to establish their, 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 their setup. Does that work? No. No. Or how about if someone gets done early and says, I don't want to stay longer. I want to leave right now. Pulls their car in during the market, packs their stuff in and go, does that work? No. Okay. How about someone that criticizes a minority group because they were there first? That's bad behavior, right? That's right. And, that, and that's happened. Um, so you have to establish rules on how to remove someone, what type of behavior that you have to do. If you don't, and you tell, ask them to leave, then it, it, it can be perceived that at random, you're just, you're, you, you, you just want them to leave. But if you have rules established, then you have due process. And with due process, you, you, you can remove them. Okay? The market manager has a lot of power. Okay? Some people come to me and say, the market manager did, I said, they have the power. The market manager can limit the number of certified producers. The market manager can tell a certified producer, you can bring tomatoes, but not lemons. Market manager can say, we we only want people who are in the county first, and if you, and if we and if they don't have the produce that that's needed, then I'll allow someone from the outside to mm -hmm. to come in. These are all the these are all the parameters of the market manager. Mm -hmm. So some people come to me and say they can't do that, can they? Yes, they can. It's their market. They know what's best for their market. They know what's best for their sales. I don't. Um, and again, if they want to remove someone from the, from the market, they have to have due process, which is why they have the rules. Um, the market is divided in two sections, certifiable ag, non-certifiable ag in one section, and non-ag in, non commodities in the other section. Steel winery, that's probably the, the biggest one. Mm -hmm. You have the crafts, and you have all the other people on one side, mm -hmm. people who buy the, oh, a good example of a guy that, that, that sells that sells pickled pickled uh, vegetables. He didn't he didn't grow the vegetables. He didn't he didn't he didn't produce his own his own vinegar. So basically, he's in the non he's they're in the non ag commodity. It, although, although it's a commodity, he didn't produce it himself. Because to be in the farmer's market, you have to produce it yourself. And I'll go come to that yet. And I'll come to what is required there, but what was interesting to me was I had a lady come in yesterday who makes pottery, sells and, and puts in store-bought succulents and sells them and want to get a certified farmer's market 
I mean, and, and want to get a state certified producer certificate from me. Does it qualify? No. In fact, the plans are incidental to her main deal, which is pottery. So, no. She can still sell there, but in the non yak section. Okay? And, then, and, then, and one last thing, does she, does she still pay the fees every, every week while she's not in the farmer's market? Yeah. Okay. So, certifiable ag commodities, raw, raw produce and nuts, flowers, mushrooms, honey, herbs, or herbs, <laughs> eggs, and nursery plants. Those are all certifiable ad commodities. Now, certifiable. What that means is we go out, ideally what the state law says is we go out before they come in to get their certified producer certificate. Well, they come in in, in January and February. What's growing out there in Lake County? Correct? So what we do is we, so but don't worry, we go out there in June, okay? And we see what they have in June, but obviously it makes no sense to do it prior to that because it makes no sense. Okay, non-certifiable, and that's what they call a certified farmer's market, by the way, because the Ag Commissioner certifies that they grow what they sell at the market. Non-certifiable Ag Commodity, farm-raised fish, meat, dairy, pollen, beeswax, propolis, royal jelly, raw wood. Why is that? It's certainly ag products. Can, can I verify that they, that they butchered their own animal? Can I verify that the fish is not from the ocean? I can't. Now, ocean fish is fine in the farmer's market, but by or it's in the non-ag non section. Okay, but that's fine, but just not in the, you can't be next to the carrots. Again, there, are some, there is some jumbling in the, in the, in the market. It's a small county, everyone gets along. As long as it doesn't get out of hand, I'll go along with it. Um, but otherwise, if this was a larger county uh, where, where the Ag Commissioner visited the market once every year, then I would have to enforce the rules differently, like in Los Angeles. Los Angeles has 500 farmer's markets, probably. And they'll come from Fresno, Ventura, Santa Barbara, some from Los Angeles, obviously. So that's why they have to be tougher in those other counties, because I can see them whenever I want to. Frankly, if anyone, I'm going a little bit off topic, if anyone cheats, I don't have to even find out. They'll tell me. <laughs> okay? Okay, non ad commodities. Candles, birdhouses, perfume, okay, pickled vegetables, bread, those are all not. Um, you mentioned earlier about mushrooms. Yeah, and mushrooms are, are... What if they're wild harvested versus... If they're on your own property. So they have... But okay. those rules are changing. They're going through some changes right now, and that is, and that is part of the recommended changes. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with mushrooms, but I know for a fact the old rules and, and may, maybe just on your own property. But again, those are what's changing. They're, 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 there's gonna be a meeting next week. They'll, they'll end up discussing herbs and mushrooms. Okay, that's a good question. Okay, if you have processed food, obviously you're gonna have to work it with environmental health to get make sure that you have a permit for a forest certified kitchen the whole nine yards. Environmental health, deals with this food safety in a farmer's market, provided it's raw, and raw, raw, raw produce. Um, there's not a lot of risk from raw produce in comparison to processed food. So, so they pay a lower fee as long as it's raw, processed, unprocessed fruit. But if you were to have your own uh, lunch, uh, lunch, lunch truck or something like that, then you have to have and you have to come up with, with that certified kitchen to be there. Um, to that. Financial stuff, if you have your own farmer's market. We're, we're $50, environmental health is, is also going to charge you, planning is going to charge you. So these, these are all fees that, that, that are, that are, that are, are going to come. The state of California, has people 
who work in three regions, North, Central, South. They're not free, they have to get paid. Who do you think pays them? Every person in the farmer's market pays them. Because every market, every, every person who's in that market, whether they be certified ag, non-certified ag, or, uh, or non-ag, pays at least $2 per, per day to that, to that market manager. Or else, the, or else they lose money. But it's more than two dollars, because the market manager. Are, 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 do you think they they work for free? No. They have to break up vendor disputes. They have to tell someone you're going there, but I want to go there. No, you're going there. I was here first. How come they're here from outside the county? Okay. They have to deal with. And it's not always that bad, but they do have to deal with 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 personalities. Okay. Um, so there's a, there's and then, then the state charges them a quarterly fee. If you don't pay the fee, I don't certify you for your market, and you don't have a market. That's what's currently going on right now in another part of the county. Steel winery is fine, but then there's another market that owes the state money. I'm saying I'm not going to do anything with you until you pay. Period. Um, so, you know, here's some odd things. <laughs> Farmers market participants, which I'll explain how to qualify, are dwindling. We were at 47 at one time, and they're down to 31. Okay? There's less people. Now, on top of that, um, we have... Last year we had 31 people participating in the farmer's market. You mean less demand? I'm not sure what it is. Less well, vendors. Yes, less, 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 but less, less vendors. Right, I mean. meaning because there's less demand, or I don't know. No, I have no idea. Fires. But there's only eight. The fires. Took well, out a lot. Well, not of really. Fires. Really. Not really. <clears throat> oh, maybe five or six people, but that's it. Hmm. Only eight people participated in the, in the farmers market, out of 31, locally. Maybe 10. They go outside the county. Okay, here's a good example. We had a certified organic chicken operation selling chicken at six dollars a pound. Is there a market in Lake County? No. There are markets in Sonoma, Marin, right? Sure. But it's not in Lake. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like demand. Yeah, that's for that stuff. Um, Yeah, there's just not a lot of people. Okay, it, 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 it might have been the drought from the past years, who knows. But we're dwindling. So I don't know what's going on. Steel winery is still strong. Um, that's the only strong market, frankly, that there is in the county. Um, Middletown maybe have two. Clear Lake maybe has three. Um, the when hopefully the one in Lakeport on Tuesday is going to, is going to do, do do better. They're probably going to have four or five vendors. Every parking. Every parking yeah. meters. So I'm just saying, it's dwindling. What about the one in Finley? Hmm? What about the one in Finley? That's steel. That's steel. That's steel. Yeah. Okay. That's doing fine. That's the only that's the only one that's solid. Is there going to be one in Clear Lake? I have no idea. In the past years, they have been averaging two or three people per market. I mean, vendors per market. Is there a reason why the Lakeport and the Finley one are both on Tuesdays? I think they're run by quality people. I think Farmer's Finest does, does quality work. That's what I think. Yeah, but if they're both on the same day, it kind of makes more competition. People can't. True, but Middletown, there's a lot more people. No, Lakeport and Finley. Right. They're both on Tuesday, right? No. The, 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 Lakeport, the Lakeport market's on Tuesday, and there is a Finley market on Tuesday. They, they, they moved the market from Finley, from Steel, on Tuesday to, to, to Beverly Park. There's, only, there's two markets on Saturday. No, one market on Saturday now, and that's Steel. Oh, okay. Milltown's pending. But Mill, again, Milltown doesn't draw as many people because it's kind of more out of the way than is steel. So where, That's my view. Where in that town do they hold it? It varies every year.
Um, but anyway, that's kind of the oddities. Um, a person, a person, actually, yeah, that's what I need to do here. Okay, how to qualify for a farmer? How to how to be a producer? Okay, come to the you come to the come to to my to my office, and you're issued a certified producer certificate. It's good for it's good for 12 months, not calendar months, but 12 months. So it began on April 1st. It would expire on March on March 30th, or or other or other first. A, a certified producer's certificate allows you to sell at the farmer's market. It's a certified farmer's market. And for some reason, people want to get these because it allows them to sell to restaurants, stores, school lunch programs. Mm -hmm. Because the environmental health has said if you're a certified producer, you, you, have, to be, you have to be a certified producer to sell to those locations. Now, do I certify for the for the safety of the food no all i certify is that you grow i don't certify for bacteria i don't certify for anything else but but there's this thing that's a certified producer in, in, in the environmental health laws and people come here for that reason <laughs> whatever you don't need to have a certified producer certificate to sell to have a produce stand you don't have to have one to sell at a farmer's market or the neighborhood market or whatever only a certified farmers market okay um, so you go you come to my office it's a $20 fee you list everything that you plan on selling if you don't list it you can't sell it okay and it's again we we do raw produce okay we don't do meat we do raw produce we do eggs raw produce um, it's a it's a twenty dollar fee. What I like to have, well, I know what I what's what's required is you can't come into our department and say I want to sell melons unless all melons are the same. And last time I looked, a cantaloupe looked way different than a watermelon. So you have to you have to break down certain commodities. Mm -hmm. Melons obviously would be would be cantaloupes. Do I care if it's hail or McHale or whatever? No. A cantaloupe is a cantaloupe is a cantaloupe. But a honeydew, a cantaloupe, a watermelon, those are all different. So you have to break that down. Okay? How about tomatoes? There are cherry tomatoes, there are swipe trim slicing tomatoes, and there are aroma and there and there and there are aromas. And they come in yellow and they come in red, don't they? So you have to break those down generally. Now, if you're going to only have four kinds of tomatoes, that's just write them all down. It's easy. But if you're going to have 20 kinds, I'm willing to work with you, and have you put and have it broken down by slicing yellow, slicing red, uh, cherry yellow, cherry red. You know what I'm trying to say? I'll tell you. You can break it down that way. Uh, squash is an, uh, squash is another one. A, a uh, banana squash looks nothing like a cooked squash. So you have to break all that stuff down as well. Carrots, to me, my world. Carrots are carrots. Okay? <laughs> uh, it used to be charred as charred, but not anymore. Because it comes in rainbow charred, red charred, and, and, and green charred. Okay, and now that's changed. Um, but if, if there's a distinct difference between the varieties, I want it broken down. And I'll explain why we have to have all these rules. Actually, I'll, 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 I'll explain it right now, then I'll, I'll, I'll go on. Believe it or not, there are cheaters. We're not allowed cheaters in Lake County, but go to Los Angeles. Remember, all the people come from Fresno. <laughs> Does Los Angeles have any authority in Fresno County? No. So therefore, you have to list all your varieties, how much, how much area you have, how many pounds you have? How many? Every I'll, which I'll go over later. How much you have of everything? Because if you have one, because if you come in with a truckload of tomatoes and on your certificate it says six plants, there's a problem somewhere, isn't there? So, 
Anyway, that's why we have all these rules on, on, on breaking it down in area and amount and stuff. Because there are people not in Lake County as much, but in large counties that cheat. So, let's go on. Uh, eggs, interesting. You can s there is there was a shortage of chicken eggs at the markets for years. All of a sudden, now, all field, now we have more eggs, which is great, because for several years, no one saw chicken eggs. And if, they, if, they, if, they, if there was ever a market to make a good to make a good to make good 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 money, you would sell it. You would sell it. You would sell it in, in one hour. But not anymore. You still sell out, but it, there's more people now. But to sell chicken eggs. You have to be registered with this with the state, and that costs money—not a lot of money, but it does cost some money. Your eggs have to be have to meet state standards, and you cannot use Safeway cartons, mm. or Bruno cartons, or any of those cartons. And why is that? You think? Could be contaminated. Thank you. And who'd be blamed? Safeway and Bruno's. Right? Everyone else that you use your cartons for, right? So I'm not going into all the rules about eggs, there are too many, but you but you have to have your name, your look the, the the city of where of where you're at, your state registration number, the grade of the eggs. The older the eggs, the lower the grade. The, the and grades are de can grades are depending on, on the air on the on the air set. The the, the if eggs just laid Here's an egg, whatever. Air sacs here. What do they get? Air sacs goes down to here. Oh. Okay. Larger air sacs. Larger air sacs. It goes in lower grade. Yeah. So that means what you have to do is, if you want to, you should, you, well, you should just sell your eggs right away because eggs eggs do go bad. Eventually. So you have to have the grade on the eggs. You have to have size. Is it is it uh, is it uh, grade A A A uh, size is is it large extra large medium? Safest thing to do, in my opinion, for eggs, besides going to the state getting register, which you have to do, and having the right cartons, is calling it grade A, because you can probably pass if you sell it right away, and and, and call them a medium. Because they call a medium, because you can put large in mediums. But if you have large and there's a medium in there, that's that's not going to make it. Make sense? Mm -hmm. You should count the eggs if you can. Um, so anyway, um, from more and more information on eggs, you just step by the office. You can and we and we can talk to you, we can talk about it. Uh, Catherine Vanderwall is our is our egg person, but I know, I know enough about them. You know, just one large farm over in Clear Lake. Yes, there is, but there are other people that sell to the farmers market. That's what I'm saying. Nursery sales. There's figs at nurseries. There's a there's a figs at nursery license and a state nursery license. If you're big time, you need to have a state. You have to have a state nursery license. If you want to sell plants, gross sales of under a thousand dollars, you produce plants yourself. And you're and you're happy just to sell in Lake County only, then the fee exempt then the fee exempt nursery license will will, will will do it for you. Okay, but a state license costs one fifty. Fee exempt is fee exempt, but those are those are the limitations. You cannot, under fee exempt, buy a plant on Monday. Keep it till Friday, and say it's your own production. Okay. Well, that just cuts you, right? That's a joke. <laughs> okay. You have to hold it for at least a month or two. Okay. I would say two months. Just, you know what I mean. Just to call it your own. If you want to start with a transplant, wait a wait a few months and then sell it. Okay, as your own. Um. So, yeah. Uh, each commodity you have to have square feet. 
So that means that you have to kind of guess what your bed is. If your bed is one foot by 12 feet, how many square feet? 12 square feet. Two feet by 12, 24, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Why do they do that? Again, we have cheaters. You tell me you have a 12 square feet and you come in with eight, with, with, with eight crates of tomatoes? Mm -hmm. Good. Really good gardener. <laughs> um, that's, what, that's why I have those, though. Where do they get the excess tomatoes? They buy them. They buy them. Yeah, they buy them. Buy them cheap. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. At wholesale. Oh, okay. Hardest part for us are packing sheds. Scullies don't involve us. That's, I mean, they don't do that. But what if you're a packing shed, like Scullies is? Again, they don't sell pears at the farmer's market. But they kept pears from all of the different pear growers. How do you know the difference? I don't. I can't tell. Can you? No, okay, we, we have a problem with that, but if you were in Fresno, where they have a lot of stone fruit packing, I wonder how they do it. Because it'd be, it'd be, it'd be hard to trace, wouldn't it? Anyway, so we went over the square footage. Uh, we'll also, we have to estimate production. Again, same rule. <coughs> so production, if you're going through production, you're saying, oh, geez, how do I do that? So here's a suggestion. You take one plant, one tomato plant. You know you have 12 plants. One plant's going to produce five pounds. Five pounds times 12, that's what you, that's what you can do. Okay? If you come in, if you end up producing 60 pounds of tomatoes, um, well, okay, if you, be, if, if you report 40 pounds, you estimate, and 60 pounds comes in. Am I, gonna, am I gonna go after you? I've got way better things to do than that. But if you put on 60 pounds and you bring in 120 pounds, yeah, I'm gonna be a little concerned. Okay, but if you're within reason, I don't care. That's why they call it an estimate. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is my favorite one. Months. If you come in to Lake County Market with plums you produced yourself in May, I'll be at your I'll be at your growing grounds the next day. You can't possibly in May produce plums in Lake County, right? Mm -hmm. That's why you have months. In fact, if you tell me you're going to have tomatoes in June in Lake County, early June. I'm going to be going to your place too. Because unless you have a greenhouse or some kind of a hoop house, you can't. There's, there's just no way that you're, that, that you're going to do that doesn't really happen. But if a greenhouse, that's fine. Perfectly, perfectly fine. Um, again, let's go to the next thing season, season, altering, season altering device. Yeah, greenhouse, hoop house, that's fine. And months in storage, obviously, unless you have walnuts, there doesn't have to be a lot of months in storage, I wouldn't think. Uh, also, garlic might come into months in storage. This would be something that would be long-term storage. Um, your certified producer certificate is good, in, is good in, any, in any county. So when you come in, you're going to list all the counties that you plan on selling in. Please do not list all 58 counties. Or 50, yeah, okay? Unless you plan on going to 58 counties. And if you put down one 12 foot roll of corn and you put 58 counties, I won't do it. <laughs> so come up with the list of actual counties you plan on selling in, okay? Um, now, the day of the market, you have to submit a load list to the market manager. Now, why is that? Because of if you were to be a cheater, you want to have proof. So you don't get caught this time, you get caught some, some other time. If you have a 12, if you say you have 12 plants, and each load list you have 20 pounds for the next six months. Does that make sense? No. It doesn't really apply to us too much, but it does apply to Los Angeles County. And other counties that are, that are, that are big. You have to post your Certified your certified producer certificate, which is what you get from us for twenty dollars. You have to post your your fee exempt nursery license or state nursery license. 
We have to post your organic registration or and or certification, and it has to be and 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 that's what has to that's what has to be there. So I can just look and see the legal. If I don't see it, I'll, I'll I'll ask you where it is. If you don't have it, and frankly you show a good attitude, and the market and the market manager is nice that day, you you don't have to leave. But if you show a bad attitude, market manager thinks you're a pain in the butt, yeah, you'll be asked to leave. So the next time around, you better have that, or else I'll ask you to leave for sure. Okay? And, 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 and it's happened once in a while. But if they're nice, I'm nice, everyone cooperates, one time, I get along with it. Not a problem. Um, you also have to have a, something that states we are we grow what we are selling, we raise what we are selling, we grow what we sell. And that's an excellent thing to use if you ever cheat and go to court. Because when you have that and you're not doing that, that's easy. Just plead guilty and pay the fine. That's the one thing I haven't really enforced that much this year so far in the farmers markets, and I always forget about it, so that's one thing I probably We'll be doing more of it in the future, but that's one I haven't been doing a lot of. That's just that one part. Scales have to be state approved and sealed by me. Now, it costs 26 bucks to, to do the work. Um, before you buy a scale for the farmer's market, you should talk to me. Because if you go online, get one of those cheapo ones from Taiwan or China that aren't certifiable, we won't seal it, and you just wasted all that money. A good, I want to say, a good legal, I want to say, a good legal scale is going to cost you four hundred dollars. Mm. A hanging scale or one of those platform scales, four hundred minimum. So if you do get one of those scales that are legitimate and pay that much money, please take care of it because <laughs> that's a lot of money. Now the difference between a legitimate scale and a non-legitimate scale is a kitchen scale. You could adjust zero to anywhere you want to be. You have a little knob at the bottom, mm -hmm. right? Hi ma'am, what's your tomatoes weigh? Oh, eight pounds. That doesn't happen, but I'm just saying what could happen. For these, for these certified scales, we have to get a screwdriver and, a, and, a, and turn a screw until it goes to zero. For you to do that as you weigh wouldn't work too well, correct? So you have to actually adjust it physically somehow without turning a screw and at, at, the, at the middle. A bathroom scale doesn't work either, okay? You can adjust those scales however, however you want to. So again, before you buy a scale for the farmer's market, please talk to us first because we can help you, we can say, if you have a scale in mind, you can say, this is the scale we have in mind. We can look, we can look it up on the state registry and say, yeah, it's good. Or no, we, we have, what is that scale? Okay, anything, any questions on the farmer's market? There's one more thing I, I thought I should add, though. You can sell for more than one person. Say that you go on vacation and, it's, and you're in the middle of the market. And as long as a person in the, is in a market that's currently legal, just like you are, they can sell it for you, provided that you have less produce than they do. Provided you're not selling, they cannot, you cannot sell for them anything that that person is already selling. You can't intermix the tomatoes, is what I'm saying. Provided they keep records for three years on your behalf. Yeah, three years. So if you want to sell for someone else, those are just a few of the rules. And you'll need to choose two people per, year, per 12 months. Once you choose those two people, and you have an outing, or an, an outing, yeah, where you're, you're stuck with that person. So make sure that if you, if you choose someone, be sure that, that, that you're best friends for life. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not gonna work. Okay, now is there any other questions with the Certified Farmers and Market? or certified producer certificate. Where is there a list of these? Of the markets? In, in Lake County, yes. Okay, we have a list. There's two There's two markets, Steel Winery on Saturday and uh, Library Park on Tuesday. 
Okay. But there could be some, yes, yeah, certified. There's a, there's a farmer's market per se in, on Highway 29. Um, there could be one in, 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 the, in the Clear Lake, but not yet. There could be one in, in Middletown, but not yet. Okay. And any, any, any other, other questions? So the 29, the one on 29 is the is at the juncture of 175. Kinda, it's it's right by there. Somebody, someone has a walnut has a walnut orchard. And there's a and there's a driveway. Um, I go. I live in Willits, so I pass by it. Oh, all, 29. All the time. I'm sorry, 20. I'm sorry, I didn't see it right. 20. Oh. Going to Scotts. Oh. And just before Scotts Valley Road, there's there's a little. Oh yes, right yeah. with the honey. Yeah. And, yeah. Walnuts. Right. And the one that I think could buy 175 that's mostly strawberries, that's just technically that's, a farm that's, stand? That's a farm stand. It's a legal farm stand. I'll go over farm stands last. Um, okay, organic program. I'll say this twice because people don't believe me. Organic people spray pesticides. <laughs> okay. They do spray pesticides. So if someone says organic, no spray used, they're being less than honest unless they're darn lucky. Rather than use synthetic pesticides, they use organic pesticides. Now what's a pesticide? A bug killer. killer. Nope. That's a, that's, that's a part of it. Mm -hmm. What else? What if I told you chlorine bleach is a pesticide? Doesn't it kill bacteria? Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. Anything that kills anything is a pesticide. How about vinegar? Is that a pesticide? It certainly is. It kills off weeds. Mm -hmm. It kills weeds? So weeds, which ones yeah. Are, which ones are harmful? It burns them back. <coughs> so they're all are, harmful. You so Okay, vinegar. they're all harmful. Okay, as the commissioner, we do pesticide enforcement. So which means we do investigations. Pour bleach onto uh, ammonia. What do you have? Combustible. Yeah. So I'm just saying, pesticide is pesticide is pesticide. Whether it kills, whether it kills snails, whether it kills bacteria, whether it kills insects, whether it kills plants. So you want to look for pesticide free? Is there such a it's thing? Hot. No, there's not. <laughs> Unless you're lucky, you may be really lucky. And one year you don't use anything at all. But it's not illegal for an organic person to use a pesticide. Vinegar is a legal pesticide to use on weeds. And it works. Really, really expensive. And it burns them back. And if you're going to use vinegar on, uh, on field bind weed, I hope you have a, a big bank because you'll be spraying that every single, every single week. Okay. What's bindweed? Field bindweed. It's a white trumpet-like flower. It grows in the ground. It's got roots that go mm -hmm. forever. Oh, that. And all the vinegar does is burn it back. So once you burn it back, those roots are still intact, and then they grow again. Okay. So we got that established, right? When they say no spray, that's possible, but they got darn lucky. Because that means they never got mites, they never got aphids, they never got white flies, they never had weeds. Or they, or they, or they just mowed the weeds. Mowing's fine. So, okay, safer soap's a pesticide. What? Safer soap? But, more, but, 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 but saying that, I also say this. Safer soap's a, a fatty oil that if you were to apply to a plant to control aphids, on a hot, windy day, you will kill your plant. Mm -hmm. Fry it. So, be sure to always read the label when you use organic pesticides, or any pesticide, because in the wrong conditions, you'll burn, you'll kill, you, you will kill your plant. What does bleach do to the produce? The, it, it, that's a, okay, if you were, if you were processing organic produce, Possibly, I don't know. I, I said I said bleach because that's a common one that people don't think of. 
I don't know if it's used for organic. I'm just saying it's, I know, but I know it's used in, in, in conventional. If you were, okay, uh, true story here. Uh, Scully Packing ships pears to Brazil. We have to issue a phytosanitary certificate verifying that they dip those pears in a bleach dip to kill off any bacteria that's on them. That's, now that's, that's a pesticide. Okay. Now those aren't organic peaches, I mean pears obviously, but I'm just saying those are just what they do. So that's one, one example of what, of what bleach is in, in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in the egg industry. I can guarantee you that Safeway and the other deli section uses, uses bleach on, on their counters, that's for sure, and if they don't, they're stupid. Okay, so there's reg there is registered organic and certified organic. Registered organic means that your gross sales, and I say gross sales, are less than $5,000. Once you hit $5,000, then you have to be certified organic. That's per year? Per year. And that means that's where you pay through the nose. Because you pay someone to certify your produce from when they leave Santa Cruz or when they leave whenever, all the way to Lake County, and all the way back, and all their time, and all their testing. Now, if your profit now if you're near $6,000 gross sales, your profit margin is not going to be too great, is it? So that's why you either go big or stay small. That's, that's my view anyway. Um, one more thing, too. <laughs> one more thing, one more thing, actually. Um, registered, or, okay. You cannot use the word organic. That word is protected by the state. Unless you're registered or, or, or certified. I see. Registered and certified. I can see, I can see it's, it's good there. Oh, that one. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. That's fine. So, Registered. So basically, if you want to say, and I can live with this here in Lake County, I'll talk louder. But if you go to Napa County or Sonoma County and do this, you probably won't appreciate you. In Lake County, if I kind of know who you are, and you put down no, no spray, no synthetic sprays used, and I kind of get a feel for for what you are, and I do it now, and I've done an inspection. I can live with that. Okay? Do the same thing in Napa County. What's going to happen to you? So there are weasel words that you could use. Weasels? Weasel words. Speaking of weasels, yes. <laughs> I find a certain irony that the top of what the topic is and what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's possible, but the same. That's it's possible. Isn't that what Sky did? Yeah, no, no. He used he used sustainable. Uh, sustainable, which is an interesting term, isn't it? Yes. To, to, to me, sustainable. Here's money in, money out. I make enough profit to make a living. That's sustainable to me. Sustainable to someone else might be I use less chemical, and it's sustainable to the earth. What is sustainable? Correct? It's not, it's not uh, specified. No, no it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> not but if right, not a legal term. Right, not a legal term. But again, if you were to use no synthetic pesticides used, or no synthetic fertilizers used, and you're in Lake County, and you stay in Lake County, and everything's fine, it's probably okay. <laughs> But once you get, to, but wait, if you stay small, if you get really big, then I'm gonna probably ask you some questions. But if you stay small, I can live with that. Um, so again, if you, if you, so you have to register with the state online. Okay. We don't have anything to do with it anymore. We used to, but we don't. And it's then on a 12-month basis. Again, not, not annual, 12 months. They will, if you register as organic, they'll send you a notice a month before it's due. If you ignore that notice, 
and they send you a letter and you have to pay a penalty fee, don't look at me. Okay? So when you get that letter, if you're if you're pressure with these with the uh, state then you need to respond okay um, yeah. to qualify to be organic you can't have used anything over the last three years that was prohibited okay um, and that includes fertilizers pesticides anything um, okay there is a list called OMRI, O-M-R-I. OMRI has a list. They're the, they're the Bible of the organic program. On that list, it's going to say approved, uh, restricted, or or prohibited. So you have to you have to go to the where you have to go to your list of your your list of pesticides that you plan on using, and, and go to the OMRI list. Just this O-M O-M-R-I. Online, just Omri, there's no one else online like it. It's, you'll, get, you'll, you'll get it. And they'll, and, and, and they'll tell you what, what's on that list. Okay? If you use something that's prohibited, then you're off, then you're out of the program. Period. Okay, there are six categories. The state used to list every commodity known to man. <laughs> and that list was probably five pages long, single print. Or, or just now they've broken it down to citrus, fruit excluding citrus, livestock or dairy, nuts, vegetables, or other commodities. So now there are six general categories that they have. The fees, if you're zero to four thousand nine 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 is twenty five dollars. Five thousand to ten thousand dollars gross sales is fifty. 10,001 to 50,075. 50,001 to 250,000 is 100. You can see where it's going. The more money you make, the more you pay. But still, if you made $250,000 and pay $100 in state registration fees, <laughs> I think that's not that's a deal. too much. <laughs> um, okay, certification is done by a third party. Which is says for it can't get pricey. I know there's a certified. I know that there's a certifier in, in, in Upper Lake, so you wouldn't be paying for the, all their time from Santa Cruz. But but there is a certifier in, in, in Upper Lake that does certify for C, for CCOF. This the California Certified Organic Farmers. Um, you have to pay them a fee, the CCOF of a fee to be to be certified organic. Um, Minimum, I would say it's a minimum of thousand dollars, and that's if you're lucky to be certified. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you're below five thousand dollars, guess who certifies you? We do, because you're not being certified by a third party. So expect every year we guarantee, I guarantee you that we'll they're ready they're ready to certify you. Okay. So that's so that's that's what we do. It's, it's primarily a paperwork trail. We look at your records. You have to keep good records of what you of, of of your sales, how much pounds were sold to where, what date was that sale. Uh, we'll we'll check your list. Well, it used to be fairly well. Now it's easy. If you got fruit, you got fruit. <laughs> Doesn't make sense to me, but whatever. Um, but this this will be the first year that we'll be still, we'll, we'll, we'll be certifying with the broad categories. Prior to that, you had to list carrots. Turnips, which was easy. Now it's vegetables. I don't. We haven't done this like this before. So what's prevented us from bringing in turnips from someone else? And anyway, that's my view. Um, so and we and we do take samples. We 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 can take up to five samples a year. And so far, everyone's come out good. No one's no one's cheated, and we found we found chemicals on it. But what's interesting statewide is they found GMO in some organic in some in some mm -hmm. organic stuff. When it says non GMO? Yes. And that may be an accident. Right, like, like cotton mm -hmm. feed, yeah. all GMO. Yeah. Um, some are part GMO. 
I think Alfalfa had Prime GMO. The state is the state. The Ag Commissioners at the, at the state at the request of the Ag Commissioners, who credit the state do testing, random testing on organic produce as far as GMOs go, and they found most of them had nothing, but some had some, and some were one were one were one were one hundred were were percent. Mm -hmm. So that's that that just came out like two weeks ago. So. Anyway, we also handle complaints. We've had, we haven't had any, any complaints yet. The only time we ever had any kind of issue was a company that thought that the state regulations for organic they could they they knew better. So they were calling organic that wasn't registered, wasn't certified good because they knew the people and they were good people. So that's the only time we ever had had any kind of complaint. And lastly, any, any any organic things? Any any more organic uh, questions at all, or anything like that? Okay, last one. Uh, uh, okay, produce stands. Um, we don't. In this department does not does not enforce produce stands because if you have a produce stand, you have to get a zoning permit. This office doesn't issue zoning permits. We issue farm and market certificates. We issue certified producers, certified producers certificates, but we don't issue zoning permits. Planning does. So if they want it done, planning gets it done. That's going to be me. And so, and the, and the permit is $244. I wonder if those people who have the papayas and the mangoes, I wonder if they paid two hundred forty-four dollars per seed. So either here on High Street, yeah. once a week. Right? I know. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Now Lakeport has its own rules, and 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 Phil Lake has its own rules. I know. I talked to some of someone who is in who is in who is in government in Clear Lake, and that person said she was going to look into it, and sure enough, they're pretty much gone. Well, some are at least the ones around the office are 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 gone. Um, but the other rules are uh, the extent is permitted if it's an accessory to crop production on the same lot. Crop production, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, cut flowers, nursery plants, blah, 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 produced in the county. Again, when I stay look, papayas and mangoes weren't grown in the county. <laughs> and, the only, and I know the sage chows with their stands in Upper Lake. Lakeport, they're and in well, if they're legal. They're, I mean, they're good. But anyone else out there, frankly, I'm not sure. But but they're doing everything right. Um, no commodities other than those listed may be sold on the on the produce. That means you can't sell, but that means you can't sell mangoes and other pies. The area can't be over 400 square feet. This is my favorite one. Set back of 30 feet from the public road. Now those are obviously 30 feet from back from the public road, aren't they? I'm, not, I'm being sarcastic, I'm not. Oh, because of the exhaust from the cars. No, I think it's safety. Safety. Oh. So people can pull off and get yes. on. But if, you're, if the road is here and your stand's five feet from there, yeah. I don't think it's very safe. In fact, it's fact, just today, side note, I went to look at the a potential Middletown issue that was pending, but fortunately it didn't have anything going today for a farmer's market. Um, this is about road safety. I'm heading up the grade where the where the where the high point is, you know, on Highway 29. The car has a blowout, side of the road, a boulder this big comes rolling across the road. I'm in a brand new county car. 700 miles on it, and it's rolling towards me. I can either stop on the brakes or speed up. I sped up, but I missed it. But can you imagine? Brand new county car, 700 miles. <laughs> okay, happened today. But that's, that's called road safety. If, if, if he was on the side of the road with that blowout, <laughs> he'd have been killed. So I'm just saying, it's for safety. Uh, 
can't be it can't be a permanent foundation. Mm -hmm. I can't, yeah. Uh, and yeah, no more of this, this, the kind of zoning permit already. Can, I don't think those people can qualify given the ramifications I just that I just said. So question, there's a there's a big fruit stand. Um, it has a foundation. It's on the way to Williams uh, yeah. on 20. Okay. That yeah. was huge. You know, it sells everything. Yeah. Is it more of a grocery store? It could be. You don't know which one is? Yeah, I think, yeah, I do. It, it, we're talking about kind of on Highway 20 where the, where the flat is. Yeah. Where they have a building where they all those, those cute signs, uh, mm -hmm. a Chiquita Banana and yes. Barbara. Yeah. 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 What would it, what is it, you don't know what it would fall under? No. I, I'm sure they have a retail. I would, that's I guess. But if they grow their own produce that they sell, then they, then they, they could have, the, the next thing, they could be just, just a big fruit stand. Because each, each kind is different. But if they can't be a fruit stand if they sell something that comes from That's the for us. Sealy's, when they were, when they were here, Grew, sold stuff that they didn't grow, but they had a legitimate retail stand. It wasn't a fruit stand; it was a jump. It was a retail stand. They paid a county fee for a retail situation. They had their own stuff, but it was a mix. So they, they were above a fruit stand. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they 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 went through the proper. So channels. they have a retail, which yes. is an umbrella. Correct. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to say that when I went to the county for the zoning thing, they charged me $75. Okay, well, the, the rules I have, the one, I, I got a rule from your way up at planning, and she said it was, and the, and the sheet of paper said, 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 said $243.90. So that's all I can, I can, I can, I can go by. But it's nice to hear that it's not quite that much. Yeah. yeah. But as long as you're legal, I don't care. <laughs> and, 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 either, and, either, and, either, and either does the county. You know, live in that lab, be free. Steve, I've got a question. It's not about permits, but thinking back, you were talking about spraying vinegar and various things to kill weeds. What's the best thing to kill poison oak? Um, I'll give you two choices. Okay. And if you're organic, close your eyes. <laughs> oh, I know what's coming. Um, the best stuff to use that's made for poison oak is Brush Be Gone. Brush Be Gone. You can buy it in the store. Just got a tricliplur. It's made for Roundup. I mean, it's made, it's made for poison oak. Okay. At any time. Roundup works, but Roundup has to be applied in, in, in August, when the leaves are still green, before they turn yellow. Oh. Because what happens with poison oak is it dies fairly young in the, in the, in the fall, right? You've seen it. But like in September, it starts getting yellow, right? Right. Once it hits that point, it's too late. But what's happening, in the plant is my term, not botany at all. The juices are flowing <coughs> down. Okay. In the spring, when you use Roundup, this flushing that's going up. So you're fighting the tide. Garland still works, but Roundup doesn't. Roundup will knock it back, but it'll come back. So brush be gone. Brush be gone will kill it at, at, at any time. Amazing. Thank you. I've never heard of that. Hope I don't get in trouble here, okay? No trouble. <laughs> I hope so or if you yeah. want to use vinegar, you can spray it over and over and over and over <laughs> and over again. I would say if you have a plant, I'm serious now, it, you, now, now you're going to like me. If you have a plant a foot tall or less, vinegar is the way to go, frankly. Because you just got to use that much, right? You just got to spray it, dies down, spray it, dies down, spray it, dies down, eventually the root just goes dead, right? But an established plant, yeah, you're quite a lot of wood. Right, okay. Well, I think I had a tiny amount of plant with a lot of roots down there. Maybe, but if so. only you see, see one shoot and there's no one else, no other plants around, that's probably going to work. But, again, I gave you the options. Thank you. Any 
more questions. Okay. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.